I mean, are people normally doing like face cream and stuff like that? Is this really heavy? Yeah, this is much better. <laughs> hey, I'm Jeremy Strong. They do a thing called 10 essential items. I've clearly broken that uh, assignment. There's more than 10 things here. These are all very important artifacts from my life that I, I'm sharing with you. This is from season two. This is a letter that I ripped up at a press conference. If you've seen the show, you probably know what that moment was. Oh, this is from season one. This is Kendall, I don't know if you can see it. This was on my suit after I had gone into the water at the end of season one at my sister's wedding. That was a really harrowing, difficult thing to do. But this is the only thing I've kept from that from that season. This I love. As you can see, I sort of already have my own version of it. I wanted something for Kendall's birthday in season three that felt colossal. Rashid Johnson is an artist that I've admired and I saw that he had collaborated with Liz Swig based on a series of paintings that he made called the Anxious Man paintings. It wouldn't, this was like a keystone that made everything come together for me. This is also from my birthday party. I asked him to make a drink stirrer with my face on it, like 3D printed with a crown. So they did. <laughs> the end of season three, we're in Italy. And every time you do a movie or every time I do a season of this, there's always a scene that you read that you think, I can't do, I, don't, I can't do this and I don't know how I'm gonna do this. And I just remember being in that sort of trance in this room before we shot that scene and the feeling of peril. This was on the door in that room. And, and, and I guess I looked at it because part of what you have to do as an actor is get out of your way. And so I looked at it and it was kind of just telling me something about don't disturb like yourself and surrender to the uncertainty and the unknown. But that was a tough day. You know, the scene didn't go well for like nine or 10 takes. And then on the next take, I sat down on the ground, which I hadn't done before. And that's what's in the show. And that's, but that was just a result of giving up and sort of coming face to face with my own, in a sense, uh, limits. This is pretty self-explanatory. This is a script binder that Robert Duval gave me. So it's just something that I treasure. I went down to visit him once at his farm in Virginia, and he's got the Godfather script in one of these same same binders, same company, same stenciling and everything. I find this object both very meaningful given who it came from. You know, I've learned a lot from him. I think he's one of the greatest actors of all time. But what's scary about holding this right now is that it is really just at this point, the exoskeleton that is gonna contain something that I don't know what that thing will be next. So it's, it's sort of a steadying and comforting and reinforcing to have this kind of embracing it. And then the thing on the inside will be, I guess, the next risk and attempt at, at doing something. Jacques-Marie Mage, sunglasses, the best company making sunglasses right now. Jerome Mage, a Frenchman who lives in LA. I have been very deliberate about Kendall's sunglasses and I'd worn some of his frames last year and I kind of sent up a flare and reached out to him and asked him if we could collaborate on something for this season. So he, his frames are made in Japan and, and he went there and I pitched him sort of the colorway that I liked and this old model that they didn't make anymore. He made me, well, he made Kendall these sunglasses and Kendall's initials, Kendall Logan Roy, KLR, are written on the inside. I have my pair, which also say KLR, and Kendall's pair. So I do know where one ends and where the other begins.
So I've never shown this to anyone. This has sat on my desk for like over 20 years. These are like artifacts from work I've done since my early 20s. This cup was from a play that I did called A Matter of Choice in a storefront on 39th Street. And uh, I'm, I guess I'll just kind of dump some stuff out. Uh, this is a cherry bomb from The Trial of Chicago 7. I lit as Jerry Rubin in a scene demonstrating how to make a cherry bomb to, to the students in a class. This is a watch that I wore in the first movie I ever did called Humboldt County. Wow, I mean, I haven't touched these things in a long time. That's from Molly's Game. I used to be able to do all kinds of poker tricks, but I can't anymore. You forget, you know, you, when you do these things, you fill yourself up with all kinds of visceral understanding, but also whatever skills you need to do it, but they leave you when it's done. I don't even know what this is. Double Smirnoff Rocks. This is when Kendall goes off the wagon in Arizona from the end of the first season. I called a friend of mine who was recently sober and I said, what would you order if, if you were gonna go off the wagon? And so this is from this bar in Arizona. First play I did off Broadway, a play called Defiance by John Patrick Shanley. I played a Marine. There was a letter written by a soldier who was in Vietnam that he wrote home to his parents. And he ended the letter saying, we are all in desperate need of love. So that's what this says on here. A story about the Velveteen Rabbit that I was gonna tell to my kids on Succession that we, that we shot that didn't make it into the show. Just an improvised story that I asked Jesse if I could do. This is from a Eugene O'Neill play called Huey that I'd seen Pacino do. I tried to do myself when I was an undergrad in college. And so I did, I did that play. And this is probably the oldest thing I have. I did this maybe when I was 19. Vinnie Daniels, character I play in The Big Short. This is all I kept from it. You know, there's a Stanley Kunitz poem called The Layers, and he says, I have walked through many lives, some of them my own. So these feel like fragments of lives that I've walked through, and this is all that's left of any of them, really. I mean, the truth is, these are such a big part of your life, and there's a strange finality when they're over, they're just over. I know they might exist on celluloid or on TV, but I don't go back and watch anything. And so I guess I keep little artifacts, you know, I mean, this is the first time I've ever taken them out, so I'm not sure to what end, but they do kind of take me back to different selves that I've walked through. This is a record of Glenn Gould's recording, first recording, he did two recordings of the Goldberg Variations by Bach. It's a piece of music that I've loved for my adult life. I listen to it all the time. Glenn Gould was a really eccentric individual and he broke all the rules about what was considered appropriate kinds of concert pianist protocol. He would hum, exclaim and make sounds while he was playing. And he said something that I wrote down that I think about sometimes. He said that the purpose of art is not a momentary ejection of adrenaline, but rather the lifelong construction of a state of wonder and serenity. So that's what I think about when I think about Glenn Gould. His piano playing is beautiful and incomparable and ecstatic and probably would be the piece of music I'd want to listen to if I am lucky enough to choose the piece of music I want to listen to at the end. I use music a lot. Depending on the emotional valence of a scene, music can help me enter into a deeper place in myself that I might need to come from. So music is an access point for me. Derek Delgadio is an incredible artist, illusionist, magician who had a one-man show called In and of Itself. And they turned it into a film, it's on Hulu. I urge everyone to watch it because it's one of the more astonishing things I've ever seen. When you go into the show, you pick out a card from a wall. I am something, something that is, feels self-identifying. At the end of the show, he tells each person, the hundreds of people in the audience, what card they picked. The Rulatista is a central character in the story that he tells, who is essentially someone who played Russian roulette 
to great success and was willing to risk everything, every time, and exist on that precipice of danger. Derek in the show talks about himself being the Relatista. And he sent this to me. He said that he'd not sent this to anyone else, but he sent this card to me. So it was profoundly meaningful to me. Rilke said that surely all great art is the product of having been in danger. This is a person who is willing to endanger himself again and again and again and again. This is a book of paintings by Howard Hodgkin, who was a famous British painter, incredible painter. I was in London and I was working and I walked into the National Portrait Gallery and there was an exhibition of this guy's work and I hadn't heard of him. What he does is he sort of takes moments in time that were profound moments for him or moments that really struck him in a certain way. And then he tries to translate those moments pictorially. So he's painting the feeling of moments in time. He would also paint over the frame of his paintings behind the hedge. I find them just incredibly moving, simple, deep, moving. As an actor, that's your palette as well. Your palette is your own experiences and memories and feelings that you try to bring in an abstract way using someone else's words. You float those words on top of an undercurrent of feeling. And so something about these paintings just resonated with me. I mean, this is like a five hour conversation right here. So I'm not really sure. These are all books that have been really important books to me. Alma Mahler's Diaries, a composer herself, married to Klimt and Mahler, who talks about the dichotomy inside people of what she calls the loving soul and the calculating soul. And her belief was these creators that were in her life, these great creators of the 20th century, made work of real value when they were operating from the loving soul rather than the calculating soul. It's a great book. Spectator Bird, Wallace Stegner, takes place in Denmark, which is a place that I now live, but I read this before it. I even knew where it was on a map, I think. He talks about the pain in every choice when we're younger, we're in this life of sort of infinite possibility. But I think to become an adult is to collapse choices, to make choices, and to lose that sense of infinite possibility. Robert Johnson, this is sort of Jungian dream work, stuff about the shadow the part of ourselves that we've disavowed, but is still there, always there. That's a big part of Kendall. That's been a lot of the subtext of the show. My favorite play, uh, The Caretaker by Harold Pinter. Incredible book on acting, probably the, if I could pick one book on acting for if a young actor was like, what should I read? I would say this book. John Kabat-Zinn, he is a remarkable man who is a mindfulness teacher, MIT trained scientist. He created something called mindfulness-based stress reduction. I've gone on some retreats, silent retreats with him. Four Quartets by T.S. Eliot. Uh, when I was 18, I went to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. The principal told us all to go out and get this book. He said, it's the only thing you ever need to know about acting. I kind of agree. There's a line in here about a condition of complete simplicity costing not less than everything. Um, I've already, quote of this dude. Uh, Proust in search of lost time. You know, I spent a couple years in my early 20s like working in room service and waiting tables and these books kind of saved me because I would, you know, I didn't have much of a social life. I didn't have any money. There's so much of what anyone would hope to learn about life contained in these volumes. And then number one for me is My Struggle uh, by Karl Knausgaard, Norwegian writer, contemporary Norwegian writer. It's the most honest expression of life that I've ever read anywhere. He writes in this incredibly granular way. He'll spend 40 pages talking about taking his four-year-old daughter like to a party and the shoes that she wants to wear. And the effect of it, the accumulative effect of it, by being in such granular detail of life, is you see the beauty and the sacredness in, in those small moments and you realize that there are no small moments. That's my fast version of these books.